my friends are since. One of the many things that I like about the Dirty Wave M8 is that it uses mechanical key switches and it also uses hot swappable key switches which means that you can change them out to suit your own particular tastes and preferences. Now if you're lucky enough to not know anything about mechanical keyboards or mechanical key switches then you might be wondering what the purpose of this is. Why would you want to change them out anyway? What's the difference after all? Well there are three kind of main different types of switches and it gets far more complicated than this but just to distill it down for these purposes you can get clicky switches which as the name suggests give you a very obvious audible click sound when you press them down. You can also get tactile switches which don't necessarily give you a clear audible click sound but they do give you a tactile response as in there's a bump or some kind of resistance in there that you feel when you press down in the switch. And then you get linear switches which are smooth as in there shouldn't be any real resistance or at least not a click or a bump in there. There are also differences between the actuation force of switches, so how much pressure do you have to put on a switch in order for it to press or to activate, and from there there are so many other differences and kind of degrees here that it kind of spirals out of control because people start to talk about the kind of lubricant in each of the switches, different switches have got different kinds of mechanisms, so some have got springs, some have got kind of lever things, and it is one of the joys of becoming obsessed with the mechanical keyboard world that you can kind of experiment with different switches and really get a feel for what become quite minute differences but which really enhance your experience or at least you tell yourself that it does enhance the experience but the main kind of differences are the things I've outlined to you. Personally I have unfortunately fallen down the mechanical keyboard rabbit hole it is a long, dark, expensive rabbit hole to fall down, but I have experimented with various different kinds of switches and I do enjoy that kind of part of the process. I've built various mechanical keyboards and it's something that I like doing. So I wanted to try out some different switches in the M8, particularly because the tactile switches that are included as stock aren't quite tactile enough for my tastes. I'm someone who likes real validation that I've pressed a button, whether that's with a click or a real thick tactile bump that gives you a nice soft bottoming out. So I have ordered a couple of different switches from AliExpress. Both of these arrived today and I got two sets for $6.50 each. So it was about 15 or 16 pounds I think with shipping for 10 of each of the different kinds of switches. The first set of 10 are the same kind of switches that are in the M8 already as in they're tactile and it's got the same kind of construction and everything. These are called burnt orange or tangerine kale low profile switches I think but they are basically just the same except they've got higher actuation force so they take a wee bit more pressure to activate. The second kind of switches are the ones that I'm going to put in today and these are navy switches. These also have a higher actuation force than the stock ones so they've got like 70 grams pressure needed rather than 50 grams or something like that but they are also clicky and they're not just clicky they've got an extra kind of thick click bar in there which should in theory mean that rather than being a high pitched click they should give you quite a, a low pitched clock sound maybe but I quite like that kind of thicker uh, you know definitive sound when you press a switch so I'm going to basically show you the process of taking the switches off and hopefully if you're considering doing this yourself but don't really know what the procedure would be like or how difficult it would be I'll be able to show you my various mistakes and then you can decide whether it's something you want to do or not. It should in theory be fairly straightforward but uh, I haven't really seen anyone else do it or at least I've not seen people go through the act of doing it yet so uh, yeah that's what I'm going to do. I should probably give you a couple of caveats before I dive in and do this. First of all the Dirty Wave M8 does have a particular kind of switches that it supports and so you can't just plug in any old switch into that and I'll talk about that in a wee bit probably but basically you need to get the kale low profile switches you can't use Cherry MX or anything like that or you could fuck everything up. The second thing to be aware of is the nature of hot swappable switches and it might you know you might get the impression that hot swappable switches means that is just a case of 
unplugging the switch and plugging in a new one and that you can do that as often as you like. And whilst that might be true in theory and practice, the more you change out the switches, the more the contacts and stuff get worn down because they are electrical components really at the end of the day, or at least they're part of the construction of the PCB and everything. So you don't necessarily want to be switching these out every day or every other day. It's kind of something where you can change them out a few times and experiment with them. But at some point you have to commit and make a decision. Okay, so here is my M8 in its case. You can see I've got my custom white keycaps installed on that already. And what I want to do is replace these switches which are under the keycaps with my new switches. And to do that, what I'm going to have to do first is remove the keycaps because you don't want to try and remove the switches whilst the keycaps are on. There's a variety of different ways you can remove keycaps in general. There is a wee tool like this, this thing. You might have seen this elsewhere. This is a kind of standard keycap puller which you basically put it around your keycaps and then pull them off. However, these don't really fit the kale keycaps as you can maybe see there. They're not quite right. They're really designed for keycaps that are a bit thinner like the Cherry MX keycaps. So this is no use for these purposes. So I've ordered this thing which essentially is a pack of double sided uh, pullers. So one side is for the keycap and one side is for the switch. So this side here with the teeth is for the uh, switch itself. You can see it's got a wee hook on the eight side. And this is for the keycap and it's got a kind of a an adjustable springy thing. So I'll take off the keycaps just now and we'll see how it goes. Wee. Shit, I've lost it. So you can see it fits nicely or it hooks nicely over each side of the keycap. I'll try to do it so you can see it. Uh, like that and then all you do is you pull make sure it's all aligned and then just oh <laughs> uh, okay let's pretend that didn't happen but uh, I actually got the switch out at the same time so I didn't want to get the switch out at exactly the same time because you run a wee bit of a risk of fucking it up so uh, this one I've got it just under the cap pull up gently there we go Okay, that's all my caps off. It took literally about 10 seconds to do it, if that. But now I'm going to take the switches out and I deliberately have tried to keep that separate from the keycaps. There are different methods you can use if you don't have one of these or you can't get hold of one. But to be honest, these are so cheap. You can get them from China for about £2. Or if you really can't wait, you can get a double pack on Amazon for £6. I ordered this this morning and it turned up today with Amazon Prime, so there's really no excuse to not using a proper tool. However, there are different ways you can do it. Avril Kadabra is fond of telling us that she uses some Lego brick removers, and I want to see her technique for doing that at some point, but I don't have any of them lying around, and it was just as cheap to get one of these, so this is what I'm using for now. So this is a bit stiffer, the switch puller, and you can see perhaps that the switch puller sits right in the groove there on the switch and it should give you some better leverage to just pull up and that worked okay although I don't know where that switch went which is yes I pinged the switch across the room so that's fantastic the key thing here is to try and pull directly up you don't want to bend it at all there is a risk that you can bend the pins. They bend very easily. Or you can snap the plastic and that's even worse. Another thing to be careful of is you don't want to do what I just did and scratch the M8. It's very easy to do that with these pullers. I'm not the world's most careful or patient person. Okay, so this is the M8 with no switches on it. It generally went okay. I did scratch the paint a wee tiny bit. Sorry, Trash 80. I've got a couple of packs of switches here that I spoke about. 
uh, I have some orange ones and these are similar to the stock brown ones which are included but they're a bit more, they've got heavier actuation force and then I've got these navy blue things and these ones have also got a heavier actuation force but they are clicky so I'm going to install these, I believe they go up this way I 100% should have checked this before doing it so to do it, it should be straightforward to install these, put it in place and then press firmly down. Yep, cool. It's really important to make sure they line up and you don't bend anything on the way in. And of course that the pins are straight before you put them in. Final one, in we go, line it up. And that is the keys replaced. So what I'll do now is before I put the keycaps back on, the best thing to do is always check that they work before you start onto the next section. Yeah, it's weird without the caps on. Okay, they both work, let's try it. Left, right. So the arrow keys are both fine. Yeah, so all the keys work. I'm going to turn it back off and now I'm going to put my keycaps back on. And this is a fairly straightforward process. You just line up the uh, wee knobby, blippy things in line with the pig snouts as I think they look like of the switches. And that's you good to go. So that's it. That's how easy it is to switch out your switches. And I was expecting there to be some more problems than there were because I have built many mechanical keyboards in my time and there's always some sort of problem with them. But I think the really solid build of the M8 helps because it means that you've got a really thick foundation or a really thick base to kind of leverage yourself off of, which is always good. And so you can hear it in action. I'll hold it up to the mic. It's a much more satisfying key press as far as I'm concerned. And honestly, it's just really nice that you're able to customise the M8 in this way. If you are thinking about switching out the keys on your own M8, just remember that you do have to make sure the keys or the switches are Kale low profile switches. You might read online that some kinds of Cherry MX switches are compatible with the Kale switches. However, that only applies to the kind of full size switches. These are low profile switches and so they have a different kind of stem in the middle and if you try and use other kinds of switches it isn't going to work. The nice thing about low profile switches is of course that they're much smaller or much uh, lower in height than the other kinds of switches you can get. However it does mean that you're limited to these particular kale switches and there isn't as huge a number of them or as big an amount of choice out there but there is enough choice so you can have some kind of different actuation forces and some clickier keys than others etc. For now I'm fairly happy with this. I am pleasantly surprised at how straightforward it was. I will probably try these out for a while and see whether or not I prefer the clicky switches or the tactile switches and then make a decision on what ones I'm going to keep in there. I do suspect that I might keep the clicky switches but change them out for a different kind of clicky switches because there are some very nice Robin Kale low profile switches which are this kind of very fetching blue colour around the outside which just really pops against the M8 and even though they're a wee bit lower actuation maybe that will end up being better. But that's enough kind of switch geekery for now. I'm um, away to try and find the other chalk brown one that I just pinged across the room when I pulled it off and hopefully that will help somebody who's curious about changing out their switches but isn't sure of the process. If I can do it and not fuck everything up then you definitely can.